बिल्कुल बिल्कुल आपने ऐसा ही कहा कि नाजरीन हमने यहाँ पे जो डिस्कशन का टॉपिक था वो इस्लामोफोबिया था तो आइए हम उसके आ, कुछ हिस्से देखते हैं प्रोग्राम के देखते रहिए वैंकूवर की जान एजुकेशनल डिस्कशन बाई पी सी डब्ल्यू एस I uh, especially would like to thank the members of um, Friends of Pakistan, uh, PCCA, PCA, and our media partners to always support our endeavors. Um, the format today is quite simple. We have our three esteemed panelists: um, Senator Samad Alajan, um, Honorable um, Council General Dr. Mohammad Tariq, and uh, um, Honorable M N A Member of National Assembly Rashid Singh. I would like to call them over one by one uh, with a basic introduction, and they would make a statement. From there on, we will get into a discussion where you, I would encourage all of you guys to get it, um, engage with them yourself, ask them questions about uh, the topic um, of interest today. So the topic, as most of you know, is countering Islamophobia. Uh, living in the West, I'm sure all of us have uh, witnessed Islamophobia firsthand or secondhand, and we all have stories to share about it. So today we'll get to discuss it with our panelists, and uh, we'll um, have a very constructive uh, discussion on that topic. In the end, uh, we have a wonderful announcement to make, and I'll save that announcement for the end. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to now um, ask uh, Salma, uh, Senator Salma Talajan, to please join us. Um, Salma is also a um, deputy uh, uh, chair for a standing committee for human rights and uh, also has done a lot of work on refugee resettlement here in Canada. So please welcome Salma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you can sit. You can sit. Uh, Salma, thank you so much for being here today and uh, for always supporting us. I know last year Salma was here um, and I was in the audience and I, uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed your talk. Um, before we get into the discussion on our topic, there's one question that I really want to ask. As a person who wants to be in politics one day, uh, do you think that, obviously, you know, you've always said, and I quote, that politics was in your blood, you always say mm -hmm. that. So do you think having the right last name really helped you, or is that something that just happened that because of you, not the last name? No, not the last name, because if you remember, uh, my family was in the politics of the subcontinent, and then, you know, after partition Pakistan, um, there it would have helped me, but here it didn't. So um, I think what really helps for anyone who's interested in politics is being um, involved in the community around you and being aware of the issues and Absolutely. being, um, as a woman also, uh, having a very thick skin and that's Rachna can testify. <laughs> And be willing to put yourself out there. I mean, you know, we're in Canada. We're lucky to be in Canada, where anything is possible. That's that's great to know. Um, Salma, is there something that you would like to tell us about countering Islamophobia? And what to you, what is Islamophobia? So what I would like to do is that, um, as your representative, um, I'm the only Muslim in the Conservative Caucus, and I have uh, been so for the last uh, nine years. That's how long I've been a senator. I I take every opportunity, if anything anti-Muslim or any kind of terrorist attack happens, I always make a point of speaking about it in the Senate. And some of you must wonder why I do that. The reason I do that is because when we speak in the Senate, it's a matter of public record. Anybody can access it. Go. 
नवीन दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के साथ इंतखब अहमद आज यहाँ पे वैंकूवर में सैनटर सलमा जान आई हुई थी और इन्होंने कनेडियन पाकिस्तानी कनेडियन वीमेन सोसाइटी ने ऑनर किया इन्हें और ये यहाँ पे रिचमेंड वैंकूवर में आई हुई हैं और इन्होंने बहुत अच्छा एक डिस्कशन का टॉपिक था इस्लामोफोबिया उस पर बात हुई और बहुत सारे हाजरीन ने भी सवाल और जवाब का सिलसिला जारी रखा है यहाँ पे तो देखते रहिए वैंकूवर की जान हम आपको इसकी झलकियाँ दिखाते हैं PCA people, PCCA, and all over there. But then at the end, you know, they they decide that they will have a, a think tank, right? You know, like the establishment of think tank. Obviously, it involves a lot of hard work and lot of money, right? You, at that time, that idea was discussed, but then it it, it was completely shut, right? So it's uh, these kind of events taking place, and right? you uh, hold a meeting, and then everything, you know, after that is you know, like it is. It goes down the drains. It's so. Uh, I think we need to have be very consistent, and we need to make efforts to reach out to other communities, not just sitting at our home and you know just having a meeting of ten or fifteen people and then just say bye, bye goodbye. To That's each other. true because we we're all most of us are Muslim here, and we we already know what some phobia is. So we educate people yeah. who don't know yeah. and uh, tell so this them. This is the first step. I mean, but I think like way. this event was more to look at how to contract okay. Islamophobia. So I think when we talk about awareness, like I think we need to do different events for that, and we want to create awareness. Like this is mostly for like, what do we do? So you are talking about the federal uh, legislations. That's what you are saying. Police, the police, yes. which is provincial. Uh, yeah. The now, the past, the when anybody do the crime, mm. so it's uh, do, uh, the profile comes on the crime basis. Now, the on the crime basis, they see the crime. I don't say mm. now. But mostly they see priority, their religion, their no, community. No, they would say Caucasian male or something like that. South Asian, South Asian, Asian but not, not religion. Yeah. Not religion. No, no, that's the way. I, I, the I priority would, they are checking their the background, the religion, and. Yeah. The religion. But I would differ a little bit on this. But this is how they describe anybody. They would say Caucasian male. Mm -hmm. They would say a South Asian person, yeah. a person wearing a turban. Yeah. This is how they put. This, yeah. this is the description, description they religion. do it. But I don't think that legally they are saying, "Oh, that person is a Muslim." Uh, my uh, like, if, uh, if somebody wearing a turban, they would say a person, a South Asian man from a South Asian descent wearing a turban or something. But they won't say, they won't bring the Sikhism into it. I don't think so. No, but, and also but we don't know. When the people talk to the media person, they can tell the story. But when they talk to the MLA or MP, they talk a different story. Uh, no, I but I, no, I'm since 20 years. When they talk to me, they tell the inside story. You know, come and work with the Conservative Party. The change has to come from within. I, I, I have changed that. their perception being the one person there. But I need people to stand behind me. No, I just want to say, um, and I, I hear where Hassan is coming from. And I'm glad, Hassan, that you brought it up. And I did ask uh, Salma before, too, mm -hmm. about this issue. Having my differences with conservatives, like we are poles apart, right? Like, uh, uh, but I can say when Harper was in power, you were asking how are you feeling? Not just Muslims, we like being a person of color. I was feeling threatened. But by wasn't them. no, but wasn't a lot of the narrative? Um, again, the narrative was written by the media. A lot of it. You can't trust Harper. Don't trust Harper. Well, he was in power for nine and a half years. So you know, he did. He, 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 he did do. Well, some some of it did come, which and yeah. there were people in the caucus who didn't agree with him, who stood up and spoke about it. Yeah, so we appreciate that. Yeah. No, and not me, not me. Yeah. Mainstream Canadians who mm -hmm. stood up and spoke about it. You know, there's support for us. There are people. I'll tell you, I find the difference um, in the politicians depending on where they're from. The ones who are from the big cities, who know us, who have neighbors who are Muslims, whose children are friends with Muslims. Their view of us is different as compared to people who come from the small towns. Like I still have people in the caucus who think I can't speak English. You know, I, I, and on both sides. The one, 
<laughs> the easiest for me, a lot of my friends from the NDP. <laughs> but but the people who they will just sort of look at you and they'll sort of say, mm, this is the Muslim lady. Now can I even shake her hand? Can I even say something to her? Can she speak English? I remember my mother-in-law when she came. She was one of the first few female doc doctors in India, and when she came to visit us in Canada, she was really old and she was in a wheelchair. And she said that when she came to the customs, the guy said, "Oh dear, I wonder if she can speak English." And my mother-in-law looked at them and said, "And how?" You know, and that sort of thing them up. So we need to be bold in our approach. If we are not part of it, then we cannot change anything, yeah. right? So if we want. Conservative party to change or their approach to change, then Muslim needs to be part of it to change it, right? Otherwise, like well, I, think it's, it, it, I it's, agree, but it's a bit more complicated too because it's complicated to because sorry to interrupt, yeah, but it's right. complicated because it's not just a matter of the Muslim minority issue. Like when we choose to be part of a political party or yeah, consider our political ideology, there's overlapping ideas and principles, right? So, so for example, Hassan. It's, it's not just about the fact that he's a Muslim and he wants a political party that is going to treat people with equality and dignity and respect despite their race religion. But it's also that not being, um, myself and Hassan, I'll, I'll speak first, not being people that just want to help people with money and privilege, the economic policies also factor in, right? So that's also a challenge is that, yes, like even if the conservative party is able to, um, you know, be respectful of Islam and, and have people within it that, that do um, treat us with equality and dignity, the issue still remains that most minorities are economically disadvantaged, are socially disadvantaged, have other issues that are compounding that maybe don't fit with the conservative party. So I don't think it's just about the race and religion issue. I think it's also about policy. You know, NDP, for example, like it's also about Minorities feeling like we want a welfare state where the government does provide free education, free health care. We have those things, but on top of that, right? So, <laughs> I, I mean, like I think it's more complex. Than that. Even though I'm not for, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not very into the politics scene, anyways, and I, I haven't been supporting the conservatives, anyways. Right. But if you look at the statistics, the times when the conservatives were in power, I would say that the the entire nation felt more taken care of in terms of economy and in terms of security that borders are taken care of. Well, thank you um, all for being here and it's so wonderful that we can be here in this home uh, to have this conversation. Um, I'm uh, an Ismaili Muslim myself. Can so, by the back please? Can we? Shh. Um, and so I, I may not be of the same interpretation of Islam as others in the room, but I th there are a couple of things that I would like to put on the table. One is that I think it's extremely important for different Muslim groups to have these sorts of conversations. We did have the conversation, and I think it's really important uh, that we have these conversations with Jews, with Christians, with other non-Muslims. But I think even within the Muslim Ummah, there are different groups of Muslims. Um, and I think it's important that as, as most different different sects of Muslims, we come together and have these conversations. The other thing is, I think we have an, a wonderful opportunity today to have a robust conversation about um, solutions to challenging problems. And I think rather than moving into partisanship, we have the benefit today um, of having a conservative senator here, an NDP MLA. I work for a liberal um, senator. I think that we should really focus on not so much who's going to win the next election, but irrespective of who wins the next election, how we're going to continue to work together Correct. to ensure that where we have bills in Quebec um, coming out, which affects all, uh, all race, or where we have bills coming out which affect Muslims, but different Muslims differently, um, that we, um, as Senator Atodan said, um, we continue to have a voice uh, within our representatives, irrespective of their political stripe, um, such that we can actually make progress on these issues. So I wonder if there's any comment on that, but I certainly feel that we have an opportunity today to discuss things yeah. constructively as well. Paul, um, the, the first part of your question, uh, I totally agree with you that there should be like, you know, dialogue among you know, the various denomination of Muslims. I agree, Shia, Sunni, Ismaili, Sunni. Yeah, yeah. When you look at the history of uh, interfaith dialogue, we see that, you know, the, the, among the Christian, various Christian denominations, the, the first dialogues were between, you know, the uh, Catholic and, you know, the, the Protestant. And, like that. 
So I totally agree with that. Um, I I I'll just uh, mention you uh, mention about one uh, you know post on which I was tagged. In. It was about you know Saudis executing a cleric, you know Shia cleric in in uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, I didn't read that post. And the uh, next morning, you know, uh, I got a phone call and uh, they told me that is this you know, personal view? The uh, like uh, is this like this? This post is you know about your personal view, or it is you know the official version of the government of Pakistan? The uh, Saudi cleric is being executed, and you know, Consul General of Pakistan is you know like you know is so much worried about that. And so I immediately you know deleted that that post. Right? Obviously. He was telling me that you know, like there are so many you know atrocities being committed in Iran, you know, against against Sunni population. So what you are going to do about that? I said I'm not going to involve myself in these kind of things, right? For your job is to sit among yourself, you know, like you should not be worried, you know, like you know, uh, in, in Canadian or Pakistan origin, you are just talking about Pakistani politics, and you know, like you are. Like, you know, talking about Shia, Sunni, like you, you should be doing something, you know, of you know, like of higher order, and you take bigger picture into account. So I totally agree with you that we need to have you know dialogue among ourselves, right? And we should not be you know saying something which is going to hurt, you know, like you know among ourselves, right? So. And I'm honestly, I'm not talking to you as a conservative now. I'm talking to you as a Muslim who has children who are growing up here. Who hopefully, at some point, when my daughters move on, will have grandchildren also. Uh, you know, we need to make this a safe place for our children and our grandchildren. She's actually right because I witnessed oh, I'm that, not, and I'm not disagreeing. And I witnessed yeah. that on that uh, event which was held at the village immigration uh, minister, I think Ahmed. He That's was him. there. Uh, he was there, and he wanted to listen to problems of immigrants. And I was at the end of the table, and we had 25 men and just two women, and yeah, all the 25 questions visa, were about visa. how to get in this country, how to get the visa, how to get our wives sponsored, how to get our wives sponsored. I wish somebody would have asked him why they are cutting down on visas from Pakistan. And the last person that I was, I was like, the nobody's interested in what happens after you get and here. And this is from the High Commission. I'm sure Tariq would be able to tell you. I have a question, a pretty uh, quick question. Uh, to me, it looks like Islamophobia has increased in Canada because of Canadian government policies supporting terrorism outside the country. And yes, because of the, they are, par, they are partner in the wars against uh, Muslim countries. There are tons of, I can count many Muslim countries, they've been destroyed to the ground. And no, none of the uh, uh, opposition parties have counter uh, the ruling party who whoever is is there they why they are supporting the terrorism uh, the wars against muslim countries i have not heard from stephen uh, harper or ndp uh, leaders in, in the house that uh, stop this stop because when it comes to nato when it comes to the the allies aligning with us they they keep their mouth shut. So I want to, uh, uh, this is a serious issue. That's why we are suffering because of our government policies on the international level. Before so you please. answer, just one second, this will be the last question for the evening and uh, I'll, we'll let you guys answer and make a closing statement um, while you answer. I, I really don't know what to say to that. I mean, we're, we're NATO, we're part of NATO. So you withdraw from NATO, you you know. What, no, we are not saying, but at least there should, there should be something. And I, uh, I and if you know, you, I'm glad you, at least you hold every party to the same thing. That that's you're right, yeah. It. yeah it, um, you know, we were very happy that, happy that we didn't go into Iraq. I mean, that was such a disaster. That's right, yeah. Uh, I was very sad that the liberals, uh, Paul Martin, took so long to decide uh, to go into Afghanistan, that we got stuck in Kandahar, which was the worst place in um, uh, Afghanistan. Um, and we unfortunately lost, you know, lives. I'm glad we were drawn from that. So, you know, I, 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 I never believe in war as a solution anyway. No, I, I will differ from you from a little bit. Like, uh, with NDPs uh, uh, has been very, very consistently against war, right? Like, and they have been, whether it was our leader Jack Layton, it was Tom Mulcair, or now even uh, Jagmeet Singh. And, uh, but we have never been in power, you have to understand that. Uh, also with the current uh, government, the policies, uh, that some of the policies that they have done about, and especially I really, really respect uh, their policy about bringing the Syrian refugees. How many, you know how much backlash the liberals get over that? And uh, how many times I have, 
like mm-hmm. seeing uh, people from the community like they are Syrian refugees they are Muslims they are oppressed they are the most marginalized people that this government is trying to bring into this country and that there are reasons this is a war torn like uh, these people are so marginalized they won't survive in the areas they are living in and how many times we hear these uh, from the community itself the solidarity from the community that you are trying to help people from this country which is uh, and the, uh, we are trying and they are your they are, they are your brothers and sisters and i hear it when i'm door knocking and people are people don't differentiate whether i'm ndp i'm liberal or i'm conservative they're just and they don't realize whether i'm provincial or federal and just blasting us why are you bringing seven refugees mm-hmm. what kind of like what are we as a groups are doing it right we have huge pakistani huge uh, diverse uh, community in sari what have we done in sari to educate those people? but the thing is that the cause why the refugees have been created because of the war then the bottom line is the our country is, is participating a, into the war we do not want to give donations whether it's you know to whichever party mm-hmm. and and we need money speaks we need we need to do that and when i ask people they say for anything they say kyu ji hamare liye isme kya hai we need to stop looking at that we need to look at the bigger picture yeah, that's true and can i can i say thank you to farad yeah. for opening the house to us thank you to babra my friend who uh, suggested this and i uh, thank you and you know what i mean i have been asked to go to other places but vancouver has a very special place in my heart i have people here who i think of as family now the love and affection that you give me and nowhere in canada have i seen a group of women that are that well organized Thank you, thank you, Sarah Selma. Thank you, Mom, Dr. Mohammad Tariq. Uh, we now have the special announcement that we were waiting uh, to make. Last year, four of our wonderful um, uh, members in our com- uh, society were recognized by the Senate. Hello. And this year, our very own founding member, Dr. Babur Rana, was uh, selected by the Senate to receive a medal for all her contributions uh, for the community work and everything that she does for <laughs> the community. And, uh, um, Oh, Dr. Balarama is a household name here. She, everybody knows her. She's a medical psychiatrist and uh, a very good one at that. And uh, we would now like Dr. Um, yeah, Senator please. Salma to please present the medal to Dr. Rana. So um, the Senate decided, we, you know how we have the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, the House and the Senate gave out medals to uh, people. And when Canada's 150th came around, we asked the House, the Minister of Heritage, that we need to give out medals to celebrate Canada's 150th. You're here on a beautiful afternoon, you know, shows that you care about the community. But Barbara has empowered women. And she is the driving force. I can see her. No, she's getting me nuts. <laughs> you know, what, what you do is very important. We women, where we come from, we face challenges. So to you, my friend, gives me great joy. Yeah. Show the medal. Show the medal. Show the medal. Big time. It's beautiful. I I really don't feel that I deserve it. You do. You do. I I just want to actually um first of all I'm really honored uh, to raise receive this medal. But I really want to thank you so now for nominating my name. but i think this medal goes to pakistani indian women society not to me i have lot of hard working committed women who do lot of work and, you are and i'm getting for it <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm getting this medal because of them all the work they do so thank you all the members of pcws thank you thank you thank you Me that means sure it means something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's a beautiful book with it, and it's sitting in my office, and I have to show it to Barbara, where it talks about every single person who has gotten this medal. It gives a bit of history. It's a matter of a record. Yeah. Honestly, it gives me pride, pride to be able to honor one of our own. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out tonight.
from far and wide, O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. जीवे जीवे मेरा सोना पाकिस्तान कुर्बान इस पे दिल मेरा और बारी मेरी जान जीवे 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 मेरा सोना पाकिस्तान कुर्बान इस पे दिल मेरा और बारी मेरी जान जीवे पाकिस्तान मेरा सोना पाकिस्तान 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 जीवे पाकिस्तान Oh, oh, oh.